What's up guys, this is Vinaya and welcome to Set Up To Win, where we help get your life to that next level. When you discuss the top NFL quarterbacks of all time, a lot of the same names keep popping up. Terry Bradshaw, Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, among others. But there's one name that I don't think gets mentioned enough, Kurt Warner. The miraculous story of Kurt Warner is one for the ages. This might be one of the greatest underdog sports stories in American history. Hollywood could not have drawn it up better. Kurt Warner was from a small town, but had big dreams. Warner was an all-American kid in the middle of America who always dreamed of playing in the National Football League. He was born and raised right off the Mississippi River in the beautiful Midwestern town of Burlington, Iowa, and was the star quarterback for his hometown, Regis High School. But coming out of high school, no Division I school even looked at him, much less recruited him. He did, however, have the opportunity to attend and play football at a smaller in-state school, the University of Northern Iowa, he earned a spot on the Northern Iowa Panther football team, but mostly sat on the end of the bench as their third string quarterback for four straight seasons. Warner practiced hard and kept hustling for four straight years, but he was after all human and he started to lose faith and was about to give up on his dreams. He considered quitting football altogether, but it was his mom who propped his dreams up and reminded him of the rare opportunity that he had. It was around this time in 1992 when Kurt Warner went out with some friends to a local country bar. It was at this bar that he met a lady, a nurse, a former Marine, and a single mother of two named Brenda. And they line danced all night. They ended up dating seriously soon after. There was something inside each of them, probably their resilience and strong spirit that brought them so close together. Warner's hard work and perseverance finally paid off. He was named the starting quarterback for the UNI Panthers in his fifth and final year of college. And Warner was more than ready once he was given his shot. He not only played, but he excelled. Warner led the Panthers to the Division I-AA playoffs and earned the 1993 Gateway Conference Offensive Player of the Year award in the process. He finished up college and set out to play in the NFL, but no team drafted him. The Green Bay Packers invited him to try out for one of the three quarterback spots. But this was 1994, and he fought for a position against future Packers Super Bowl champion and Hall of Famer Brett Favre, future Jacksonville Jaguars legend Mark Brunel, and Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer. All three of them were not only super talented quarterbacks, but really well-known players who came in with high acclaim, bolstered by the national media. Warner was the odd man out, and he pretty much didn't have a chance. He ended up not getting a roster spot. He returned to Iowa and took a job at a local grocery store called Hy-Vee, stocking shelves at night. But the dream never died. Warner spent every day working out and taking care of his kids while he worked at night at the grocery store, he stayed ready for his next opportunity. After some time, Warner scored a tryout with the new expansion franchise, Iowa Barnstormers of the now defunct Arena Football League. He won a spot on the team and went on to lead the Barnstormers to two league championship game appearances. After these two years, he started drawing a little interest from the NFL again. This time, the Chicago Bears called him for a tryout. However, Kurt and Brenda just got married and were on their honeymoon in Jamaica at the time. The Bears agreed to give him a tryout upon his return, but while he was down in Jamaica, a scorpion bit Warner in his throwing arm elbow. The bite swole up so much that Warner had to cancel the trial. This trial took Warner years to earn but it was gone in an instant. His NFL dreams were pretty much done at that point. 
All the meanwhile, the Warner family kept expanding as Kurt and Brenda had more kids, eventually adding five more kids altogether. Warner grinded it out for another season in the Arena Football League, and this time caught the attention of NFL Europe. NFL Europe doesn't exist anymore, but it used to be kind of a minor league for the NFL to develop their young players. They signed him and sent him over to Amsterdam. Yes, Amsterdam in the Netherlands, the land of tulips and wooden shoes, to play for the Amsterdam Admirals in 1998. As usual, Warner rose to the occasion and led NFL Europe in passing yards and touchdowns. This was good enough to score a tryout with the St. Louis Rams. The third and final quarterback position for the Rams was being fought for between Warner and another guy. Then Rams coach Dick Vermeil saw some intangibles in Warner that he liked, so he went with his gut and chose Warner for the job. So finally, at the age of 27, Warner was on an NFL roster, but it was by the skin of his teeth. Warner barely played, but he was determined to take advantage of the opportunity. The next season, 1999, the Rams starter Trent Green suffered a knee injury in the preseason. At that stage, Coach Vermeil, the only NFL coach who ever believed in Warner, went with Warner as his starting QB. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. This was Warner's chance to shine. This was the moment he had been preparing for his entire life. In his first NFL start, at the age of 28, Warner led the Rams to victory behind 300 passing yards and three touchdowns. The Rams caught fire behind Warner's magnetic leadership. With Warner's unwavering faith and that dream burning bright inside of him, it was no surprise that he quickly emerged as an inspiring force for the team. He was overflowing with positive energy and excitement. His teammates naturally rallied around him. Listen to teammate and legendary running back Marshall Falk describe Warner as a leader. I believe the mark of a great leader isn't how great you are, how much you can do, but it's how, how much better can you make the people around you? Can you get something out of someone that they could not get out of themselves? The Rams finished strong, earning the best record in the NFC at 13-3. Warner threw 41 touchdowns, the second highest total for a season in NFL history. And he ended up winning the most valuable player award that season. Just a few months prior, he was a guy nobody wanted, but now he was the MVP of the NFL. Incredible. Warner led the Rams into the playoffs with a head full of steam. He led them all the way to the Super Bowl. He rose to the occasion but unfortunately suffered two broken ribs during the first half of the game. But that wasn't enough to stop Warner. He kept playing. He somehow, through grit, determination, and faith, led the Rams to a Super Bowl championship. He led the Rams to another playoff berth the following season. And in the 2001 season, Warner won another MVP award and led the Rams to yet another Super Bowl, aided by his teammates, running back Marshall Falk, and stud wide receivers, Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. The brutal injuries Warner suffered started to pile up and his performance dropped off. The Rams eventually cut Warner in 2004 and his Cinderella story was about to come to an end. But if you learn anything, it's that you should never count Kurt Warner out. The New York Giants took a chance on Warner so he could help coach their newly drafted quarterback, Eli Manning. He did a good job, but the Giants cut him from their roster after the season was over. Again, Warner was down, but not out. This time, the Arizona Cardinals signed Warner to a one-year deal in 2005. He won their starting quarterback position, but he suffered an MCL tear in his knee late in the season. Again, Warner battled back and stayed with the Cardinals. In 2008, at the age of 37, Warner threw for nearly 4,600 yards and 30 touchdowns. He led the Cardinals to their first ever Super Bowl appearance. 
He finally did retire in 2010 after putting together a legendary NFL career. Three Super Bowl appearances, a Super Bowl championship, two league MVPs, four Pro Bowl selections, and a number of NFL records. In 2017, Warner received the greatest honor a football player can receive, and that is an induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. By pretty much every measure, Kurt Warner is a success. He's healthy, happily married, and has a big family. He put together a Hall of Fame NFL career, and he's worth an estimated $30 million. But what were the secrets to his success? The number one secret to Kurt Warner's success is his perseverance. How many times was the door slammed in his face? He could have quit after high school when no major college wanted him. Or he could have quit in college when he sat on the bench for four years. Or he could have quit after the hundreds of times an NFL team told him that they didn't want him. But he did not quit. He kept working at his craft, doing whatever he could do to keep his dream alive. He worked in a grocery store, stocking shelves at night, and playing anywhere that would take him, the Arena League, Europe. His dream was on the brink of death countless times. The world kept telling him to stop dreaming, but his heart kept the dream alive. Warner stayed positive, thankful for every single opportunity, and he always stayed ready. The second secret to Kurt Warner's success is that he always kept people who believed in him around. One of Warner's secret weapons was his wife, Brenda. She was not only there every single step of the way, but she was there pumping him up, believing in his dreams as much as he did. This wasn't just a motivational thing either. She was there with the kids, figuring out how to put food on the table and how to keep the lights on during all those lean years. It was not an easy journey for them, Kurt and Brenda's partnership and their ascent to the top, fueled by their faith and belief in one another, is one of the most beautiful parts of Kurt Warner's story. In addition to Brenda, Warner was constantly encouraged by a small group of coaches he had in his life, in addition to his parents. Warner was smart enough to keep these people close to him at all times. The third secret to Kurt Warner's success is that he practiced judo with the doubters. I've noticed this trait among many other self-made successful people. A way to take the rejection and doubt that others throw at them and use it to fuel the fire within. The world labeled Warner as not good enough, but all this did was motivate him that much more. And this is immediately evident if you watch Warner. He possesses an unshakable belief in himself and just oozes confidence. In a way, Warner's disadvantages might have been advantages. What if he was from a bigger town and got more attention from big name colleges? Maybe he wouldn't have been as fired up to prove himself. Maybe he wouldn't have had the same work ethic that fueled him to grind every day when all hope was lost. Maybe he wouldn't be the man we know today. The story of Kurt Warner is probably one of the most inspiring in American football history. He was just a nobody from nowhere, a kid nobody believed in, who fought through all the odds to chase his dreams. When you consider what Kurt Warner went through to get to where he went, you have to consider him one of the best of all time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please comment below. And if you liked this video, Please like, share, and of course, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.